Today on Bridge City News, Justin Trudeau faces criticism for appealing a court ruling on compensation for Indigenous children. Jagmeet Singh promises clean drinking water for all Indigenous communities and is criticizing the Liberals for neglecting the Grassy Narrows First Nation. And Alberta Premier Jason Kenney campaigns on behalf of some Ontario candidates, keeping his promise to help elect a new federal government. Your nation. Your province. Your southern Alberta. From the heart of Lethbridge, it's Bridge City News Weekend Edition with Paul Arthur. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. The 6th Annual Lethbridge Police Service Run took place this morning with a good turnout for a cool autumn morning. The event features a half marathon, a 10-kilometer and 5-kilometer run. All proceeds raised today go toward Special Olympics Alberta. If you love unique jewelry and gemstones or fossils, you may want to drop by the Lethbridge Exhibition Grounds for the National Rock and Gem Show of Canada. The event continues tomorrow from 10 until 4. Show Chairman Brett Jensen explains what you'll find. Well, here you're going to find every kind of rock and gemstone in the world here. The dealers here have gathered rocks from all over the world. Gemstones of every color and variety and price and so it's a worldwide hobby, a worldwide business, and uh, gems and rocks travel the world, I'll tell you. They, so um, you're gonna find all everything. So even local rocks, which I collect and cut and polish and promote, as, as well as rocks from India and China and Russia and South America and you name it, everywhere. For anyone interested in a new hobby, the Southern Alberta Rockhounds Club offers instruction and use of its rock cutting and polishing machines. And for those who enjoy collectibles, the fourth annual Lethbridge Comics Card and Collectibles Show filled the Lethbridge Legion today with an amazing collection of old coins, hockey cards, comic books and toys. We asked one of the show organizers why people are so interested in collecting these kinds of items. With the toys and stuff, it seems to be people like to think back to their child when they're growing up, maybe in their teens or younger, and they just remember things. And they collect them because, of, I don't know, they just like the feel of doing it again or looking at it again. But with comics, it's such a vast difference. Some people collect just for the, to sell again. Some collect because they love reading them. Some just, like I said, like to collect them because they remind them of their childhood when they first bought them. At the end of the forest fire season, new numbers from the BC Wildfire Coordination Centre show the stark difference between the 2017 and 2018 wildfire seasons when compared with this year. The Wildfire Service says it responded to 784 fires across BC in 2019, which scorched almost 21,000 hectares. But in 2017, the number of hectares burned topped 1.2 million. And in 2018, B.C. recorded almost 2,100 fires with nearly 1.35 million hectares burned. Upwards of 5,000 workers have walked off the job at six Crown corporations and one Crown agency in Saskatchewan over stalled contract talks. Picket lines went up yesterday after negotiators for the province and the workers represented by Unifor failed to reach a tentative deal by Thursday midnight. Unifor is seeking wage increases of 2% in 2019, 2020 and 21, and has said the key issue is the government's demand for wage freezes. Meanwhile, the Ontario government and the union representing thousands of education workers are at the bargaining table today trying to head off a major school strike. Members of the Canadian Union of Public Employees are threatening to walk off the job on Monday if they can't make progress in contract talks with the province. If the strike goes ahead, at least two dozen school boards across the province say they won't be able to hold classes. Former Nova Scotia Premier John Buchanan is being remembered as an old-style, glad-handing politician whose folksy manner helped the Tory party win four consecutive majority governments. Buchanan died in Halifax yesterday at the age of 88. He was Premier from 1978 to 1990 before serving 16 years as a Senator. Premier Stephen McNeil called Buchanan, quote, a true champion of Nova Scotia. The federal government is appealing a Canadian Human Rights Tribunal ruling ordering Ottawa to pay $2 billion in compensation to First Nations children and their families who are separated by a chronically underfunded child welfare system. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau says he agrees with the decision but that his government needs more time to negotiate the details with provincial and territorial governments. 
We need to have conversations with partners. Uh, we need conversations with communities, with leaders, to make sure we're getting that compensation right. Those are conversations that we cannot have during a writ period. Government can't be having those discussions because we're in a writ period. Therefore, we need time to be able to do that and get it right because Canadians expect us to get it right and Indigenous peoples expect, expect us to get it right and that's what we'll do. It hits to the core of that number one call to action mm -hmm. and you are seen to be taking kids to court instead of compensating them. We no, we agree that we need to compensate them. We absolutely agree there needs to be compensation. The question on how to do it requires conversations with partners, with communities, uh, with experts. So why experts. didn't you ask for, and the, for an extension okay. instead of asking for a judicial review? The uh, decision by the Human Rights Tribunal came down mere days before the actual, uh, the actual writ got dropped. Uh, and the Canadian Human Rights Tribunal expects us to bring in a plan of action by December. That is simply not practical, not possible, given the electoral context. National Chief of the Assembly of First Nations, Perry Bellegarde, calls it beyond unacceptable that the Government of Canada is once again preparing to fight First Nations children in court. NDP leader Jagmeet Singh is criticizing the federal government for its neglect of the Grassy Narrows First Nation in northwestern Ontario, a community that has been dealing for decades with mercury poisoning from contaminated water. Singh says he would ensure every Indigenous community has clean drinking water. What the community has asked for is $19 million for a treatment centre. Now. While that's what they need to deliver the type of treatment center that's required for a community that's been impacted by mercury, the Trudeau government has come back with a figure of 10 million, so half of what's needed, essentially. And of that, they've not delivered any of the funding, maybe a percent. Effectively, no money's been delivered. So for New Democrats, this is a priority. We would immediately move to commit to the $19 million, ensure that the treatment center is built, it's fully funded, and ensure that we're taking steps not to just clean the water and treat mercury poisoning that's impacting people now, but also a commitment to ensure we find enough money to ensure that there's no more boil water advisories and drinking water issues in any Indigenous community across Canada. Green Party leader Elizabeth May made a campaign stop in Cowichan Bay on Vancouver Island today, promising a framework for First Nations communities to opt out of the Indian Act as part of its strategy for reconciliation, which she admits will be a complex process. May called the Indian Act racist and oppressive. The Greens are pushing hard for a breakthrough on the island. Conservative leader Andrew Scheer campaigned with candidates in the Toronto area today. He's also getting some help from Alberta Premier Jason Kenney, who was in Ottawa yesterday, campaigning on behalf of a local Conservative candidate. Kenney said he had made a promise to Albertans to help elect a new federal government and is making good on that commitment. Andrew Scheer has been a close personal friend of mine for 20 years. And I just want to go out there and vouch uh, for him as a man of integrity. So I'm not going to get uh, mixed up into politics in different provinces, uh, provincially. Uh, I'm just here as, as, a, as the leader of the third largest economy in Canada to say we desperately need a new federal government. You know, this is not a, a, a personality contest. Um, this isn't about, um, you know, who has walks onto the stage with the best haircut. This is about who has the most credible plan to address the everyday concerns of Canadians like the cost of living. And I think he has that best plan. It, I hope he has a chance to convey those key points. The Federal Conservative Party says it has dropped Heather Leung as its candidate in Burnaby North Seymour because of homophobic comments she made in the past. Meanwhile, the Liberal Party has decided not to fire a Nova Scotia candidate who apologized after a series of sexist and homophobic social media posts resurfaced from 2012. Jamie Baptiste is the candidate for the riding of Sydney, Victoria. Climate activists are engaging in prominent actions in European capitals today. In Paris, hundreds of protesters from Extinction Rebellion entered and blocked a shopping mall in the city's south. Shops closed and demonstrators locked the mall doors and barricaded themselves inside. In Berlin, members of the group have started setting up a camp outside Chancellor Angela Merkel's office. The protesters are urging Germany's government to improve its climate policies. 
Pope Francis has chosen 13 men, including a Canadian, to become the Catholic Church's newest cardinals. Many of the men are from dioceses in the developing world that have never been represented. The appointments mean Francis will have named more than half of the members in the College of Cardinals who are eligible to vote in a conclave for the next pope. Francis was elected as the first Latin American and first Jesuit pope in 2013. Iraqi authorities have lifted a curfew in Baghdad two days after imposing it to stop anti-government demonstrations. Officials say at least 70 protesters have been killed in clashes with security forces since the unrest erupted on Tuesday. There is a heavy security presence in Baghdad, but streets and squares remain open to traffic. Recapping one of our top stories this hour, NDP leader Jagmeet Singh is promising clean drinking water for all Indigenous communities and is criticizing the Liberals for neglecting the Grassy Narrows First Nation. And a look at weekend weather, a few clouds overnight with a low of zero, sunshine tomorrow along with a west wind gusting from 40 to 60 and a high of 14 degrees. We are just a couple of weeks away from the federal election and Hal Roberts has been interviewing our local Lethbridge candidates on their party platforms. Amy Bronson is the liberal candidate. That interview is coming right up. But first, here's a look at what's happening in and around our community. Here's your Bridge City News community calendar. Come out and support a worthy cause. The Blue Rain Ranch Animal Assisted Therapy Foundation Benefit Dinner and Auction is taking place on Saturday, October 19th at the Community Hall in Fort McLeod with cocktails being served at 5.30 p.m. and dinner beginning at 6. Come dressed in your best Western wear and enjoy live music by dual grand fiddle and guitar. For tickets, call 403-894-9160 and for event details, visit bridgesofhope.com. The Galt Museum and Archives is hosting a Halloween Spooktacular on Saturday, October 26th from 1 to 4 p.m. Come for a family-friendly afternoon where you can play games, decorate a pumpkin, make a trick-or-treat bag, and other fun crafts. Plus, go on a tour of the building, hear spooky ghost stories, and enjoy free popcorn and caramel apple slices. Admission is free. For details, visit galtmuseum.com. And that's your Bridge City News Community Calendar.